whole purpose of this trip really was to capture the beauty of not just a fish, but really the surroundings that it lives in. And the Rio Grande cutthroat trout, I mean, it, it's my fish. I, I, I just, I love Rio Grande cutthroat. This trip, it's sort of, uh, it's the opposite of, of everything that is, you know, everyone's picture of, 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 of angling in general. You know, this, these are not big fish. They're beautiful fish. And they're, they're small, yes, but they live in beautiful places and it's all part, it's, it's the whole package. So this trip we wanted to catch, you know, the Pecos strain and the Rio Grande strain of the Rio Grande cutthroat. We wanted to do both in one trip. So that's pretty much a mandatory stop to New Mexico being that's the only place the Pecos strain exists. Pecos strain Rio Grande cutthroat exists only in the Pecos River Basin. Uh, it's still a Rio Grande cutthroat, but they have larger spots uh, than the ordinary Rio Grandes that you'll find uh, in the Rio Grande Basin throughout Colorado and New Mexico. We went up there, we hiked in. The main thing was to check it off the list to see the difference in the in the diversity just based on you know where they're located. And uh, man, I mean, we we had to work hard because it's kind of that diamond in the rough. It's that. It's that fish that is worth working hard for. Um, man, I don't know if I ever want to work that hard for a fish again.
this creek I found and came up here, I think the first time in 2010. And it, it, it captured my heart from, from the first time uh, I ever came up here. Um, it's, it's, it's breathtaking. I mean, you, you basically leave kind of a high desert area and you enter, you know, this aspen and spruce forest and it happens in mere minutes. It, the, the transition from desert bottom to, you know, this mountain forest is just, it's almost instant. Um, wildlife's incredible, but the, the thing that keeps me coming back time and time again is I have not caught prettier Rio Grande cutthroat anywhere on this earth. I've never seen them as beautiful as what this place has to offer. And it is the hardest place I've ever fished. It demands the most of any angler because your casts are so tight, they're so short. I mean, we're fishing six foot fiberglass two weights and it is the largest rod you could possibly fish in here. The payout when you actually land that fish, you only get to hold on to it for a couple seconds because that you're so worried about doing anything to that fish. I mean, you literally, you hold it, you unhook it, and you let it go. It stays in the water the whole time, and you're trying to get it back to its home as quickly as you can, and you just have precious few seconds to capture that memory. And I think that's really why we're up here doing this. It's worth it. And, and when you hold that first fish and you see that color and you see that fish come up and take that fly, there, there, you can't put a price tag on that. You can't put, you can't put a price tag, you can't put any amount of effort or planning or hours in a day on it. And, and, it, and most people won't ever understand that. It's a fish that's under a foot long, 90% of the time. It's like God spent extra time on that one fish. It, it's like he made all the other fish and he got to the Rio Grande cutthroat. He goes, I saved the best for last. I'm gonna put a paint job on this fish that is gonna rival anything in nature. And you hold that and you let it go and you watch that fish swim off. And you know that for those few seconds, you got to be a part of that kind of beauty. And it's just incredible. I mean, there, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it.
I'll come back here until I can't. I can barely walk right now, and I'm still going to drag myself up this creek. And I'm going to go as far as I can and as hard as I can till I just stop, till I can't. And I think even as, you know, I get older, I mean, it's my hope that, you know, my kids and my kids' kids and, you know, that they get to come back to places like this. I know I can come back year after year after year and experience the same thing I did the year before, if not even better, because the fish got bigger, you know, people aren't harvesting them. And, and there's people that are working, you know, around the clock to make sure that places like this still exist. You know, everyone's idea of angling is, is the big fish, but, um, you know, and when I go home, uh, and I tell people about this trip and, and, and show the pictures and the videos, you know, they'll, they'll laugh and they won't understand, but, uh, but that's okay because I've been here and I've seen it and I've experienced it and, and I have a, uh, a great emotional attachment um, to this fish, uh, this place, and it's unbelievable. footage of pika than we could possibly use, but I mean, who cares? It's a pika. I hate this creek. This creek sucks. Um, <laughs> it's the worst creek ever. Worst creek ever. Yeah, don't, don't ever come here. Shoot, man, if he'd stay in my pocket, I'd be tempted to wear fishing vests again. Gosh, dude, he's just frozen in cuteness.